What's up, YouTube? This is James, and I'm back with another reaction video. Uh, this one is called Cat Williams Confirms That Diddy Tried to Kill, Tried to Something, Jamie Foxx, for Refusing Freak Offs. Um, hopefully, YouTube doesn't uh, strike me for saying the title of the video, but uh, I don't know what's going on here. Cat Williams is on a roll. Who knows if you can believe anything he says. But uh, this is on TMZ. There's videos, I think, of something. I know Jimmy Fox had a medical emergency a while ago. It wasn't really talked about. So we're going to see what's going on because I have no clue what, what this is about. It just came up in my algorithm. So let's peep it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's go. So Jamie Foxx suffered a very serious medical emergency that landed him in the hospital. Um, and we are going to describe just how serious this is. I would show up to the party in my little, uh, in a little town car, just town, you know, I grabbed my town car so I could skirt. Puff the SUVs and the road, and the Bentleys, the whole night, he get out. I get out too with a camera. The big cannon, like, yo, Puff, I should document this, shit, right? Yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? I said, I should get this, man. You, Fonz, with a whole nine. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Excuse me. So I get that. <laughs> but at that time, it wasn't like the little camera y'all got in. It was the big intrusive cannon. I had a battery pack. Hold on, man. Let me change the pack. Put my light on here. Do that again, Puff. Do that again. I missed that one. Do that again. Put the pack. So I started following him. So I followed him the whole time. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel filming it. Oh boy, it seems like the Diddy drama is spiraling into a whole new level of crazy because Cat Williams just dropped some bombshells, accusing Diddy of allegedly trying Apparently to unalive Jamie Foxx after Jamie- Cat Williams must have a, a tour or something coming up because uh, he wouldn't be doing these crazy interviews and dropping all this. Uh, that's one way to promote something, right? Just drop everybody's uh, dirty laundry out there. Jamie decided to step away from Diddy's infamous yeah. freak off into a whole new level of crazy because Cat Williams just dropped some bombshells, accusing Diddy of allegedly trying to unalive Jamie Foxx after Jamie decided to step away from Diddy's infamous freak-offs. Remember when Jamie faced that serious medical emergency last year? Well, buckle up, because it wasn't just some random health scare. It was allegedly orchestrated by none other than Diddy himself. Cat is now spilling all the tea on how Jamie found himself on the brink of disaster. What they saying? It was... Uh... COVID related and they had a stroke and that was from the shot and all this stuff. Due to his mysterious illness, and he's pointing fingers directly at Diddy. This story is wild, and CAG didn't hold back on any details. Now, the burning question is why is Cat choosing to speak up about this now, and is he really part of a larger conspiracy to take Diddy down? The timing is raising eyebrows, and we can't help but wonder if there's more to the story that's yet to unfold. I'm a, I'm a tell you like I told Puffy, I don't let me. There ain't no conspiracy to take the dude down. If, if the only conspiracy is him doing it to himself, by doing a bunch of dumb sh Men take me out, sir. I'm good. I'll do no damage. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I think we can all agree that some very powerful people are behind Diddy's downfall. Because, girl, the more we hear about him, the more we realize the messed up things that Diddy was allegedly involved in for years. And think about it. If Diddy has gotten away with this alleged behavior for more than 20 years, why is he getting exposed now? Well, Kat has all the answers to that. Because he is now claiming that the reason Diddy is now getting exposed is that he has fallen out of favor with the Hollywood high ups who have always protected him for years and now that diddy no longer has that protection he is free game and that's why we're starting to see more stories so the question is why would he have fallen out and why doesn't he have the protection because of all the crazy stuff he did they can't protect him anymore probably just like let it go finally got cut Diddy no longer has that protection. He is free game. And that's why we're starting to see more stories and revelations Cassie come out about him. Guy. Now, Kat has never been the type of person to shy away from talking about the shady side of Hollywood. And he has spoken about Diddy a couple of times in the past because he has never been scared of Diddy or his backers. However, he is taking things a step further now and exposing some really sinister sides of Diddy. Now, okay. most things that people have exposed Diddy for are stuff about him putting paws on people or allegedly
actually essaying people, but Kat has something crazier to talk about because he just claimed that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive Jamie Foxx. Back in April last year, we all got wind of Jamie Foxx being hospitalized. Yeah. The family kept the real details under wraps. And you know when there's a lot of hush-hush, something's cooking. Turns out that something might- I remember this specifically because it was like trending on Twitter every other day. Jamie Foxx, uh, like COVID injury, uh, Vax injury, uh, some movie or something made him get shut and made him get a stroke, all this stuff, like just, and people were hell bent that that was the truth that, and that's what happened. So this is interesting. Might just be Diddy, according to Kat. Jamie, who was a longtime attendee of Diddy's notorious wild parties, recently broke down and opened up to him about what really goes down behind the closed doors of these extravagant gatherings. He didn't hold back, sharing tales of wild pool parties, lavish spending, drugs, and some eyebrow-raising activities that left fans in utter shock. If you've been keeping your ears to the streets, you know Diddy's parties are the stuff of legends. Rumors about the wild shenanigans there have been circulating for ages, and it's not just about popping bottles and hitting the dance floor. Yeah, oh no, according to the anymore. grapevine, there's a whole other level of shenanigans going down behind those VIP doors. We're talking about these and not just with anyone, but allegedly with male rappers, and shockingly, some even what? claim underage boys in certain cases. Oh. It's kind of mind-boggling when you think about it, but hey, it's Diddy we're talking about, and whispers about his alleged involvement in such activity. Why'd they have to show Bieber when they said underage boys, insinuating that it was him? But I don't think that was... Uh ever brought up. Diddy's have been around for decades. Allegedly, of course. So let's talk about how Diddy's parties are a whole different breed of crazy. It's not just the wild parties that got people spilling the tea about Diddy. Recent news about some twisted incidents made the news, and it got worse with his ex-girlfriend Cassie's lawsuit, which opened Pandora's box for Diddy. Cassie straight up dropped a bombshell in that lawsuit, revealing just how messed up her relationship with Diddy was. Turns out Diddy had a penchant for male escorts, and Cassie spilled all the deets on some seriously wild escapades. She really went on and on, and girl, the things she said in that lawsuit are straight out of a horror movie. According to Cassie, Diddy would bring in these male escorts, and she found herself tangled up in some intimate encounters. And it wasn't just about watching. Diddy played the director, calling the shots during these so-called freak-offs. Cassie also spilled that Diddy used to record these escapades. A lot of this was talked about in the, the other video that I watched, so I'm not really trying to stop and react to a lot of that. Confirming what Jamie Foxx used to do at the Diddy parties he oh. frequented director calling the shots during these so-called freak-offs. Cassie also spilled that Diddy used to record these escapades, confirming what Jamie Foxx used to do at the Diddy parties he frequented. The rumor mill suggests Diddy allegedly took advantage of young artists at these gatherings, coercing them into engaging in questionable activities. Jamie Foxx was a regular at these parties until he mysteriously fell ill and almost died. Jamie, in his own way, had hinted about the things going down at these parties, even if he didn't spill all the details. He once talked about the craziness at Diddy's parties and even claimed that Diddy once assigned him the task of recording the questionable activities that unfolded there. You know, you couldn't even get in this party. So the way I would get in this party is I show up with a camera. Puff, yo, you gotta let me film this. The whole thing, we need to document this, Playboy. Now, before we dive into Cat's bombshells, can we just take a moment to acknowledge the multiple accusations against Diddy? People claim he allegedly yeah, tried to videos. coerce them into freak-offs, and the guy apparently loses it when they turn him down. In 2013, federal agencies were all up in Diddy's business, launching an investigation into the nature of his activities with young boys. When the feds step in, you know they mean business. They probe deep into Diddy's world before abruptly dropping the investigation. According to Kat, Diddy was still under the protection of some very powerful people at the time and they pulled some strings to get the feds off his back. But hold up, there's more. Diddy's former artist, Mace, dropped hints that Diddy tried to push him into a freak-off when he was under bad boy records. Allegedly, this ordeal was the real reason is it, I'm assuming a freak off is a, is a or G, O R G, but they're saying freak off instead. Just my guess and behind Mace's beef with Diddy, eventually prompting him to ditch the label. After parting ways with Bad Boy Records, Mace took a detour from the rap game to pursue a higher calling, becoming yeah, a pastor. Got, Some folks speculate direction. that Mace's decision to step away from the mic and embrace Christianity might be linked to witnessing some wild things at Diddy's parties that didn't align with his spirit. It's not unusual for artists to find solace in religion when the industry gets too real. Looks like Mace might have encountered things that didn't sit right with his soul, steering him towards a more spiritual 
hip-hop. But before he went on to become a pastor, he and Diddy didn't quite end it on good terms. Word on the street is he didn't get paid by Diddy after leaving the records. Yeah, you heard it right. No cash, no checks, just radio silence on the payment front. And if that ain't enough, Diddy supposedly did a number on Mace's rep in the industry and got him blacklisted. You know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people. He went around spreading rumors, talking smack, making it impossible for Mace to land a deal with another label, which is just shady. And now he's back to spill the tea on the secrets he once saw. He went around spreading rumors, talking smack, making it impossible for Mace to land a deal with another label, which is just shady. And now he's back to spill the tea on the secrets he once saw. In an interview, Mace threw shade at those who've been working behind the scenes to pour mud over his name for years, claiming that there was more to Diddy and his parties than we would ever know. And I want to tell you why, you know, if the devil can use him aggressively, then I want you to know God could use me aggressively. When Mace okay. dropped the bomb saying it was worse than we thought, he wasn't playing around. Rumors about Diddy's sexuality have been circulating for decades. Back in the 90s, the industry was buzzing with whispers about Diddy's preferences, and Sugi Knight and Tupac Shakur were among the first to throw talking. those questions out into the open. Suj, never one to shy away from stirring the pot, dropped some bold hints in the 90s about Diddy's preferences. At that time, Suge wasn't exactly sharing a buddy-buddy vibe with Diddy. He went on the record making statements that had people talking talking. Suga wasn't the type to beat around the bush. He threw shade at Diddy and spilled the real tea on what Diddy was up to behind the scenes. Let's not forget Tupac Shakur, who had an intense rivalry with Diddy. Tupac, known for his candidness, had suspicions about Diddy's sexuality and didn't hesitate to voice his concerns about Diddy being on the DL. These keep, keep going, uh, videos keep turning into uh, videos about his sexuality, which is interesting, but not that big of a deal to me. The fact that he's lying about it is and that he's doing the weird stuff with young boys and making other dudes do stuff is, is messed up, but um, does it play? Oh, I guess we'll see if it plays a big part in this. L. Whispers were floating around the industry, and Tupac, true to his nature, addressed them head on. Like and what about 50 Cent? He's been on Diddy's case for as long as we can remember. 50 Cent was among the first to clock onto Diddy's secret activities, holding nothing back. He called out Diddy's sexuality, even dropping some pics that set the entire internet ablaze. One time he posted this picture of Diddy and Rick Ross that looked like they were making out and captioned it with, something ain't right. Now I'm not here to judge anyone's lifestyle, but 50 Cent has this unique talent for making us all all sit up and pay attention. It's like he's the hip hop detective investigating Diddy's moves and he has been quite relentless. For example, there's the time he said, I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. He even talked about how Diddy offered to take him shopping. So yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we can just hang out. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puffy. Okay. You're telling me we gotta kick it. He's like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or something? I mean, like, I paid for it, and I was like, what the f this n just said? <laughs> In the past couple of weeks, Diddy has faced a barrage oh, of accusations bad. from several young Pretty men close, who yeah. once looked up to him for mentorship and a shot at success in the entertainment industry. And let me tell you, these allegations are hitting Diddy hard. Among the accusers are notable young figures like rapper YK Osiris, actor Orlando Brown, and Empire star Brysher Gray. Mm. These guys, at some point, considered Diddy a mentor, thinking he would pave the way for their success. Little did they know, Diddy wasn't handing out freebies. Brysher Gray's introduction to Diddy had happened through his manager, Charlie Mack, who helped him land his role in Empire. Brisher had goals of becoming a rapper, so Charlie Mack connected him with Will Smith, who then linked him up with Diddy. Now, considering the rumors about Will being a frequent participant in Diddy's wild escapades, you can connect the dots. The streets are buzzing with claims that Diddy allegedly blackballed Brisher when Brisher grew tired. Man, I say it ain't so about Will, come on of the wild activities, which might explain why Breischer faded from the scene after Empire. But hold on, there's more. Even Usher, Diddy's protege, isn't exempt from the whispers surrounding Diddy's peculiar fantasies. Usher spilled the tea in an interview with Howard Stern, recounting how he was sent off to live with Diddy at the tender age of 14, all orchestrated by L.A. Reid. With Diddy rubbing shoulders with big names in the industry, Usher got a first-hand look at the industry. Usher spilled the beans about his time living with Diddy, and let me tell you, it was more than he 
he bargained for. While trying to learn the ins and outs of the industry, Usher was also dragged into what Diddy called the Diddy Flavor Camp. And trust me, it wasn't your typical music boot camp. Picture this, a 14-year-old Usher away from home suddenly thrust into Diddy's world of Flavor Camp. You can't help but wonder what kind of flavors were on that menu. Although Usher didn't dish out all the details in his interview, he hinted at witnessing some seriously wild stuff that a young teenager shouldn't have been exposed to. I'm not really. I Come mean, on. but did that, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. There. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. It was, so nobody it was tried to, you know, some mm. woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say that. Okay. I, I didn't but say you that. Didn't, <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Fans couldn't help but question why a 14 year old Usher was living with a grown man, especially considering Diddy's wild reputation at the That's time. Childish. Usher spilled the tea that he had free reign at Diddy's place, staying up till the early hours, partying with the adults. A seriously messed up situation. When Howard Stern asked Usher about chores, he just grinned, revealing that his only task was to party. Could you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. But here's where it takes a more concerning turn. Yeah, when quizzed 14, about whether Diddy's place was filled with girls, Usher seemed uncomfortable. Yeah, the lingering exactly question right. remains. Did he get Great his hands question. dirty and does Diddy have some dirt on him? Or maybe he mm. dove too deep and now doesn't know how to get out. It could even be that he's fearing Diddy might try to pull a stunt similar to what he allegedly did to Jamie Foxx when he allegedly tried to unalive Jamie. Let's dive into the rumors swirling around Diddy's alleged interactions with another young man in the industry. And this time, it's none other than Justin okay, Bieber. There have been constant whispers about Justin Bieber's wild 48-hour escapade with Diddy. When he was just 15, Justin himself has shed light on a dark chapter in his life, when he was caught up in the dark side of the industry and was hooked on drugs. Now, this adds another layer of suspicion considering Diddy's alleged reputation for substance use. For quite some time, rumors have circulated, hinting at Diddy's alleged inappropriate behavior towards Justin during his younger years. The 48-hour stint Man. took an intriguing turn when Diddy promised Justin a Ferrari for his 16th birthday. Now, was that Ferrari merely a gift, or did it serve as a means to keep Justin tied to whatever was going on behind the scenes? These rumors are gaining momentum, and it's time to unpack the events. There are also murmurs suggesting that Diddy might have allegedly played a role in getting Justin Hook. Uh, what do you guys think? Is this all just a uh, circumstantial BS? Uh, is there anything to what they're saying? Um, I want to know more about what the actual title is about, like more information on that on drugs. Justin has openly discussed his struggles with addiction in the past, and it's sad to learn about the challenges he faced in the industry at such a tender age. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. And it was just an escape from He also talked about how difficult it was for him to beat the addiction. I was waking up in the morning, and the first thing I was doing is popping pills. and. Good thing, every, most of the things he said there, except for maybe the pills, like, aren't really physically addictive, I don't think. Like smoking, but like, Molly, shrooms, I forget what else he said, but those aren't addic addictive, physically at least. Smoking a blunt and starting my day, it just got Damn scary. Right. I basically said to myself, I'm like, God, if you're real, you get me through this season of stopping these pills and stuff, and if you do, I'll do the rest of the work. Fans couldn't help but notice a significant shift in Justin's circle after he made the decision to clean up his act and stop using. He distanced himself from Diddy and didn't spend as much time with Usher as he used to before embracing a sober lifestyle. Justin embarked on a remarkable journey, waving goodbye to drugs, achieving sobriety, and taking his career to new heights. Now, circling back to the Diddy saga, brace yourselves for an even wilder twist, because Cat Williams just dropped a bombshell, claiming that Diddy allegedly attempted something sinister against Jamie last year. Jamie allegedly okay, wanted out of Diddy's infamous freak-offs, and according to him, this decision led to a shocking incident. In case you missed the tea, Jamie faced a severe health setback last year, experiencing a medical emergency on a movie set. While the Fox family initially kept the details under wraps, Jamie's daughter Corinne stepped in with a statement saying, From the Fox family, we wanted to share that my father, Jamie Fox, experienced a medical complication 
radiation yesterday. Luckily, due to quick action and great care, he is already on his way to recovery. We know how beloved he is and appreciate your prayers. The family asks for privacy during this time. The interesting thing about this is that several people in the industry who seem to be in the know kind of hinted that he was the victim of an attack. For example, Steve Harvey said, I don't even really know what happened, man. I was just stunned because Jamie's fit. This dude, he don't do nothing, man. This dude is fit, so I was concerned, man. So I hope everything works out. I'm pretty sure it will. Martin Lawrence also said, I mean, I wish him the best. He's in my prayers every night. He's not only one of our best entertainers we have out here, but he's a great person and he's a genuine person, so please pray for him. Nia Long also tweeted, My heart is heavy this morning, praying for our brother, Jamie Foxx. My love and prayers run deep for you and your loved ones. Pray for Jamie Foxx. It got even weirder when reports started going around that the cops paid a visit to Jamie in the hospital, and he allegedly told them that what happened to him wasn't an accident because someone had actually tried to unalive him on purpose. A source said, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody is trying to kill him. I'm telling you, man, it's like they have a timer of these celebs' lives. I believe him. Well, it didn't take long before people started to point fingers at Diddy and accuse him of allegedly being the brains behind Jamie's medical emergency. Now, people think that the reason Diddy is coming for Jamie is that Jamie recently confirmed that Diddy used to attend and host wild parties back in the day and a lot of shady stuff used to go down and he used to record them. I would show up to the party the in my little, uh, in a little town car, just town, you know, I grabbed me a town car so I could skirt, puff the SUVs and the road, and the Bentleys, the whole night, he get out. I get out too with a camera, the big cannon, like, yo, puff, I should document this, shit, right? Yo, what's up, Playboy? <laughs> what, what, what you talking about? I said, no, I should get this, man. You, Fonz, with a whole night. He says, uh, yeah, let him through. Excuse me. So I get that. <laughs> but at that time, it wasn't like the little camera y'all got in. It was the big intrusive cannon. I had a battery pack. Hold on, man. Let me change the pack. Put my light on here. Do that again, Puff. Do that again. I missed that one. Do that again. Put the pack. So I started following him. So I followed him the whole time. I remember watching Puff at the Beverly Hills Hotel filming it. In Cassie's lawsuit, she spoke about how Diddy often tried to unalive his ops and take them out permanently. She said, for example, on one occasion when Mr. Combs and Ms. Ventura were using drugs together in his home, one of his security staff barged in and announced that Suge Knight, a longtime rival of Mr. Combs, was spotted at Mel's Drive-In Diner in Los Angeles. Mr. Combs began to get dressed, retrieved multiple guns from a safe, and ran out of his home to where he believed Mr. Knight was dining. She also claimed that Diddy allegedly tried to unalive alive Kid Cootie because he found out that Cassie had been dating Kid Cud after she left him. She said, in February 2012, he, during Paris Fashion Week, happened. Mr. Combs told Ms. Ventura that he was going to blow up Kid Cootie's car and that he wanted to ensure that Kid Cootie was home with his friends when it happened. Around that time, Kid Cootie... Uh, they're probably going to talk about it now, but from what I know, uh, he actually uh, confirmed this and was there at home when this happened. So, and knew who did it. His car exploded in his driveway. For the next couple of weeks, it was touch and go because there would be more updates saying stuff like, he's okay, thank God, he's still in the hospital and doctors are running tests, but he's awake and alert. They're keeping him under observation. But the next thing we knew, there would be an update about how his health had taken a turn and his family was fearing for the worst. It was a pretty insane situation, but Kat is now insisting that Diddy was allegedly trying to teach Jamie a lesson. See, not only did Jamie spill the tea about Diddy's parties, but he also allegedly got sick and tired of the freak-offs, and he decided to call it quits. And one thing about Diddy is that he does not handle rejection well. But hold on, because there's still a lot more to unpack here. According to an insider, Jamie allegedly not only used to be a big HOE back in the 90s, but he was also bisexual. So back in the 90s, my mom nicknamed guys. Jamie Foxx. Like, if you take the O out of his name and replace it, with a U, that's what she used to call him. But to his face, it's like a haha -ha joke because he used to bang so many guys and girls in Hollywood. But that's not even the juiciest part of the story because her next revelation is shocking. And he used to have these things called butt naked basketball games, okay? He would invite over a lot of like Hollywood's elite to his house for a basketball game, but it was men only. And they would be like, oh, we're just gonna get naked and play basketball. It's like, oh, haha, -ha, let's get naked and play basketball together, which is weird. 
And this happened in the 90s. Playing basketball shirtless, now that's one thing, but stripping down entirely, Never that's just like suspicious. That. Let's not kid ourselves. It sounds like they were engaged in more than just a casual game of hoops. I mean, come on, it's probably a front for some adult activities of a certain nature. And what's intriguing is that one of Diddy's former bodyguards spilled the tea about him attending similar gatherings. She was at a party before that they attended, and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. I guess that, that's, that's what Tupac was talking about, the rule of uh, It's uh, like if Biblical Fox was with this big gay man, he was 6'9". The they called him, his name's 6'9". Never mind. He had the red hair with big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay and I'm like, well, what the f is going on here? It's just a lot, of, a lot of weird dude. Yeah, I'm connecting the dots here and it's painting a pretty clear picture. But hold on, my good sis still had a lot more gossip to dish out. A lot of your like favorite celebrities were there, including someone who may or may not been married to someone who was drinking that lemonade. If you want to know mm. like who was probably at these games, just look at like who P. Diddy and Jamie Foxx have been hanging around for years especially the like the super successful ones. Usher was definitely there. Diddy wasn't about to take this double insult lying down, and according to Kat, Diddy decided wow. to teach Jamie a lesson for meddling with him. But he didn't stop there, because he the also revealed there. that there was a reason Jamie's family decided to handle the situation privately. He claimed that Jamie's family might have suspected something was amiss, which is why they kept his illness on the down low. It seems like they were playing it cautiously and scared of revealing too much. Mm. You know how it is in Hollywood, it's like navigating a real-life chess game and one wrong move could turn you into the next headline. And let's not forget, if Diddy's involved as the rumors hint, nobody wants to be on the wrong side of that drama. So not instead of risking exposure and putting Jamie in further jeopardy, they played it smart, protecting themselves while still giving us just enough smart to keep me. the gossip mill churning. But there's more because remember how Kat said that Diddy offered him $50 million for a one night stand? I've had to turn down $50 million four times. <laughs> four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yeah! you about. <laughs> right, because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Fans had a lot to say about this and left comments saying, Diddy would have been super serious about silencing Cat W knowing what a threat he is to him. He can't off him because that would be obvious seeing as Cat has already outed him. So what better way than to bring him into the fold? $50,000 shows you the desperation. But think about it, once you join the club, you can't exactly talk about it. There were other comments saying, like Cat said about Jamie, how do you have a mysterious illness? And I'm starting to think Diddy is truly a megalomaniac. That Bratha is a menace to society and something needs to change quickly before he causes someone to lose their life. This is not a game at all. Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but y'all drop your thoughts about this in the comments. Then check out this next video. Go. All right, so that was Cat Williams confirms that Diddy tried to off Jamie Foxx for refusing freak offs. Um, wow, so much information overload that just hit my head right there. Don't know if any of it's true, but a lot of the stuff that was laid out seems pretty damning, and it happens to be laid out over and over and over again. Uh, you can check out the other video I did about uh, the whole Diddy situation as well. Um, it's just insane, the fact that the like he's still running around free out there. Right? Like, even if he is innocent, I think there's enough uh, evidence to uh, charge him with something and figure it out uh, for sure. But uh, let me know what you think. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until next time, guys, deuces.